All right, let's look at the fourth FRQ for AP Physics uh, C E and M 2025 exam. Long parallel wires S and T are distance 2D apart. That's that there. Both wires carry equal currents I, okay? But the currents are in opposite directions. So this is to the right, this one's to the left. Okay, um, at the instant shown in figure one, sphere one is a distance D. So it's here. Above the wire S, uh, sphere two is a distance D below wire S and they're moving. Each sphere is a positive charge Q and gravitational effects are negligible. F1 is the magnitude of the magnetic force exerted on sphere one due to the currents and wires S and T. F2 is the magnitude of the magnetic force exerted on sphere two due to the currents, wires S and T. Indicate whether F2 is greater than, less than, or equal to F1 by writing one of the followings and justify your answer. So which one is it? Is it greater, equal, smaller? So why is there a force to begin with? That's always the first thing I always think about is, I have a charged particle that's moving through an area. There's only two forces that could happen, right? The electrostatic force could do to other charges, which is not happening. You have a flow of charges here, but there's no net charge on there. So there's no electrostatic forces. I mean, technically there could be electrostatic force between these two. So you might think about that. So let's draw our free body diagram. So there's an electrostatic force. Uh, but, oh, actually they actually only care about the magnetic force, Never mind. <laughs> so the magnetic force is due to the other wires. Each wire creates a magnetic field. So we've got to know the direction of the magnetic field. So wire S, we'll do in blue, creates a magnetic field where my thumb is pointing to the right. So I have my fingers curl on the back side of the wire and come down in front when I do that. And so in, in terms of this, you're going to have a magnetic field that goes into the page here, down, and on the back side goes up and then comes out of the page here. So that's the that's the magnetic field. This is from the magnetic field from wire S. And then um, for wire T, he's going the other way. So his fingers curl into the page here. Um, on the front side, it goes into it. And on the back side, it comes out like this. And then for this guy, he's also going into the page here at this point, but a little bit further away, right? Like this would be the loop that you would create there for that guy. So what's happening is on sphere two, the magnetic fields are adding in the same direction. So it's increasing. So sphere two is being exposed to a stronger magnetic field than sphere one, because this one has a magnetic field coming out of the page and into the page, they kind of opposite directions. And so they kind of cancel each other out. So therefore F2 is gonna have a greater magnetic force. Now we can't just talk about the magnetic field. We gotta talk about the magnetic field. You gotta talk about all aspects of that force right? It's the QV cross B and it's perpendicular. So it just becomes QVB in this instance. So we want to talk about all of those things that is happening and just be very clear on that. So, um, both charges are moving with the same, moving with the same charge. Cause we want to talk about how Q and V are the same, same charge and speed through a magnetic field, through a magnetic field, uh, a magnetic field um, perpendicular to the velocity, perpendicular to the velocity. Uh, sphere two, it has a, is, is, is subject to a greater magnetic field net magnetic field because both wires have a magnetic field that's adding. Both wires are adding uh, to the B field into the page or in the negative Z direction, negative Z direction, or, or you can say into the page, negative Z direction. Whereas sphere one has the B field from each wire uh, canceling uh, in opposite directions. And then finally, we're going to say because we have a greater, so larger, larger B field implies a greater force. That's all you got to say for that one. 
Derive an expression for the magnitude total of the magnetic field location sphere 2 due to the currents of wires ST in terms of DI and physical constants is appropriate. Begin your derivation by running a physics principle or an equation from the reference information. So technically speaking, I, I think in the equation sheet, they don't actually give you the equation of a magnetic field due to a wire. But um, you would, you so we're going to, the, the total is going to be BS plus BT because they point in the same direction. Um, you can use ampere and loop technically if you're supposed to derive it. That would be like the probably the strictest term is to say like by circular symmetry if we do an ampere and loop. So if you do an ampere and loop, they might let you get away with just using. So magnetic field from a wire is the mu naught i over two pi r. Okay, that's this is what we're gonna derive. But but just to be if I were being careful, just because that's not on the equation sheet technically. Um, let me pull up the equation sheet and take a look. Yeah, that's you see, if you look at the equation sheet, you have this force from the magnetic field. This is a charged particle moving through here. This is a, this is Bios of art, and here is force from a wire, right? Um, a, like a force on a wire in a magnetic field, but not not like the magnet, not in the force just from a single wire. So because it's not in there, just gonna do the extra step of doing the ampere and loop um, around one wire. Okay, and so that would be the integral B dot DL is equal to mu naught times the enclosed current. And so this would be B times, because you're doing a circle, it's 2 pi R is equal to mu naught, and the I enclosed is just I. So the B is equal to mu naught I over 2 pi R. So therefore, the B total here, because they're both adding in the same direction, is mu naught I. What's the distance for sphere 2? They're both a distance D away, and they're going to add, right? So it's over... 2 pi d plus mu naught i over 2 pi d. And that's going to just add together. So you get mu naught i over pi d. OK, so that would be my part there. Later, wire t carries a current 3i in the positive x direction. So this one here, we're going to increase the current. At the instant shown in figure 2, sphere 2 is a distance d below and d above, and still moving in the same direction. F nu is the new magnitude of the magnetic force due to the wires S and D indicate whether F nu is greater than or equal to F2 by writing one of the following. Um, uh, F nu is going to be greater. So it's going to be greater because we said, uh, so that we're adding in here, it's just going to increase the magnetic field. Oh, actually, it's, sorry, it's 3i to the right. I didn't catch that difference, 3i to the right. So now the B total, oh, we got to reference our, our equation in here um, because the opposite directions, hmm. Let me think about that. I don't know how to connect it that well to this one, because this was just the total magnetic field, not the magnetic force. But the magnetic field now is going to be mu naught i over 2 pi d minus mu naught, I, mu naught 3 i, because they're going to be opposite directions over 2 pi d, which is going to be negative mu naught 2 i over 2 pi d, which is going to be uh, the negative mu naught i over pi d, right? So it's just going to be maybe opposite direction, but ultimately like still the same magnitude. So f nu is going to equal f2. Um, so what's the, uh, this is the part, I don't know how to connect it. I guess I would just derive it the same and say like, well, the magnetic field will sum to the same magnitude of mu naught i over pi d. So the, the magnetic force will be the same. Kind of weird to reference that. I think I'm just going to reference it and just say like, well, the magnetic field is the same amount. Like, that's how I'm going to connect the two. Just say like, well, down here, still the same amount. And you got to remember, that's because the magnetic fields are now, like, from wire S, right, that's going into the page, and wire T is coming out of the page, right? So they're now going to subtract in terms of the magnitude, but the magnitude of the force is going to be the same now.